Okay, let's say for some reason you decided you want to measure what the maximum bench press weight is that, some, that your class can lift. Uh, but it's too cumbersome to measure everyone in your class, so you just take a random sample of 19 students and you say, well, let's see what they can lift. And you do, and you measure them. And you get, an, you get a mean of 250 pounds and a standard deviation of 130 pounds. So now you want to construct a 95% confidence interval within which, we hope, the mean for the whole class will fall. So how do we do that? As always, start with what you know. So we got a random sample, and our sample size was 19, and we knew that the mean of the sample was 250 pounds, and that the standard deviation of the sample was 130 pounds. So we got our estimate for the mean here, 250, uh, and so we need an estimate for our standard error. And our estimate for this, we said we would use the estimated standard error, which is the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. And so in this case, we know the standard deviation is 130 pounds, and we know the sample size, and that is 19. So let me plug this into a calculator and I get 29.82 is our estimated standard error. Okay, so that's our estimated standard error. Now the next thing we should figure out is our degrees of freedom, and that's easy. We know the formula for that equals n minus 1, and n was our sample size, we said that was 19, minus 1 equals 18, so that is our degrees of freedom. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is we're going to need to pull up our t-table. But first, let's think about what we want to do. So we are looking for a confidence interval, right? So that's going to be a two-tailed a two test. So a 95% confidence interval is going to have 90% of the area in here. 95%, I'm sorry. And so then the remaining, this would be 2.5% over here, and this would be 2.5% in there. Okay, so that's what we need to find. Let's pull up a t-table. Okay, so here is a t-table that we got, and we already know that our degrees of freedom, I believe we said, was 18, because we had a sample size of, of 19, so degrees of freedom is 18, because our sample size was 19, right? And what else do we know? We know that we want to get a 95% confidence interval, so that means we're going to have 2.5% on this side and 2.5% on that side. So first, let's just make this easier by circling all the numbers in this row that we're going to need. It just makes it easier to look at it for me, at least. All right, so now let's look at the top. What do we want? We want a 95% confidence interval. So you're tempted to say, hey, let me do this. Let me just pick this one. But what this means is not exactly what we want. So this is a 5% uh, one-tailed test, which means 10% would be excluded on the two tails because you'd get 5% over here, 5% over here. For a, a, a sum of 10%, that's not what we want. We want a sum of 5%, right? And so that's the one we want over here. Two tails, 5%. And that's, so that's what we're going to go for. If we were just to use one tail, we knew it would be 2.5% here, right? So that's why it says 2.5 up there. So this is the one we're looking for, right? So let's circle this as well. And then our intersection here, we got 2.101. So our T value is 2.101. Great. So what this really means is that we this 2.5 mark is 2.101 standard estimated standard errors on this side and that side same kind of thing we would go we would subtract off negative so subtract off 2.101 estimated standard errors now we are ready to construct our confidence intervals so we take our formula remember which was the mean plus or minus the t value times the standard error, the estimated standard error. And so if we fill in the formula, the values here, we know it's 250 
plus or minus t, which we said was 2.101. And then the estimated standard error we said was 29.82. Let me grab my calculator. This little portion here equals 62.65. So now we have 250 plus or minus 62.65. So 250 minus 62.65 is 187.35 pounds. And 250 plus 62.65 is 312.65 pounds. So this here is our 95% confidence interval here. So this is our 95% confidence interval. That the mean, we're 95% sure that the mean, not sure, you know, our confidence is 95% that it, it is in this range over here. And so that would be our 95% confidence interval of what this class can bench press. And we needed to use the T-table, right? And we, and the, the, we, we calculated the, the degrees of freedom, and we used the two-table one, right? So 2.5% on either end. So this would be the equivalent of, if it was just a one-tailed test, means we wouldn't, wouldn't have this, only 2.5% would be included. And so that's why we have to use this one that says 2.5 here, if it was one tail. But we have two tails, right? So 2.5 plus 2.5 is a grand sum of 0.5 for the two-tailed test. So we use that, and we knew our degrees of freedom was 18, and so that's how we got our T2.101, and then we used our confidence interval formula, and we figured it out. All right. I hope this clarified things a little bit. If not, please put some comments down below, and we'll see if we can get that a little more clear. Okay, thanks. Bye.